this whole thing is atypical. I think we have a much better feel for what's going on now than certainly we did on February 20th. This will give me real-time coordinates for this point right here. We're mapping, we're drilling, we're doing test pits. Uh, we're just basically creating an underground map of what's happening. Right now we have about 500 feet of affected roadway. But the active part of the slide at the base is 1,200 feet wide. So if you're moving 1,200 feet of something at the bottom, eventually you could get that or maybe more at the top. Now, we don't know what that risk is. It could be very low or it could be moderate. But we do know that in the active area, we do have a high potential for some, at least some additional road damage uh, because this is very deep. The shears here are at uh, depths of about oh, 105 to 125 feet. Most of the shears are extending through what we call the Chinle Formation. It's, uh, it, it varies, but part of that Chinle is a very uh, kind of plastic uh, clay. That's the bad actor here. You have bedrock that's being dragged down the hill, but it's riding on these thin, gooey, fat clays. The biggest thing is to determine if we can keep the road here, if we can fix it here, or what we can do. If the shears are too deep, it tells us that we have certain options in terms of trying to fix the slope. We've drilled a total of 17 holes. We started off by drilling 10 holes actually in the road with auger rigs, installed inclinometers in all of those holes. Then the next stage, uh, we started drilling holes down in the slide and up above the road. So uh, we've got now the crux drills, which are the track drills. We've got a helicopter that we're using to move them around, and they can put that thing just about anywhere, piece by piece. There's no other type of rigs really in the country that can do what these rigs can do. And then and the great thing about them is that they get pretty much 100% recovery when they're coring, which is the important thing. We've done some unconfined compression tests on rock back in our, our Tempe lab. That kind of gives us the mass strength of the rock properties out here. Uh, and then the clay itself, uh, we've got some torsional ring shears that are being run out in California. We're doing a lot of uh, you know, grain size analysis, PI, uh, Atterberg limits tests. Uh, that, that also gives us an indication of just how bad that clay is. We're continually monitoring uh, everything that's going on out here. We've got slope inclinometers, like I say, and we've also got uh, TDR, time domain reflectrometer cables in seven of the holes. It goes down along the length of the slope inclinometer casing. Uh, we send a signal down that cable, and what, what comes back up tells us basically if there's a shear along that cable at some depth. And so uh, we're using all of that information to kind of map what's going on underneath. We're coming up with alternatives basically right now. We would like to try to keep this alignment in its current configuration as much as possible. But uh, we do need to have the entire picture before we really finalize those those alternatives. It's all about, unfortunately, patience. You know, I know the road's been a nice thoroughfare for everybody and everybody loves it loves to use it, but it, when you get in an incident like this uh, in Mother Nature, you just gotta, gotta be patient and give it some time. Make sure you get the right answer and not just put a Band-Aid on it. ADOT, keeping Arizona moving.